Um, you need to think about what kind of stitching you want to put on your piece. Um, I like to use variegated threads. I use a little bit heavier weight thread. So, um, and I brought embroidery threads are also great. I always use at least two strands of embroidery thread when I use it. Um, there's also pearl twist cotton, which is a little bit heavier, but it's still thin enough to get to pull through the, the layers without getting caught. So that works really well. It has a real nice embellishment. So you can look at this and you can see there's a lot of just plain running stitches, just up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, I added little tiny pieces of brick rack and ribbon at this step. You can do that. Um, I did French knots on part of it. Or, did I? I think there were French knots. <laughs> Somewhere in here there were French knots. Um, I added beads. This is the step where you want to make sure you catch the edge of all the ones that didn't get fused down. So like, you can do it here. Um, I also brought my sewing machine. There's only one sewing machine for all of us. But I wanted to encourage you to do the hand stitching instead. But it's kind of cool to go to the sewing machine and maybe put five or six just plain straight lines at random across it just to hold it down. And the, what's in the machine is invisible nylon thread in the bobbin and in the, the, the top and the bobbin. So that when you stitch, you will not see a color, but you will see the shadow of the line. So it adds a closing line. It's different than these hand embroidery lines. Um, you can also do, if you're, if you're good at embroidery, which I'm not, but if you are, you can add embroidery stitches um, on these, just like they used to do in the old quilts, the crazy quilts. They, they would uh, lay strips of fabric down and then put in beautiful, elaborate embroidery stitches, spider webs and flowers. Way, way more work than I, I would do it, but it's very effective. I think it would be very effective. Um, another stitch that's kind of fun, this stitch is called a seed stitch. And uh, it's really fun to do. It's a very random, so a, like a, a, a quilting stitch, you just go up, down, up, down, up, down, like that, in whatever direction you want to go. Um, a seat stitch does this. It's you don't have to have anything straight. They don't have to be the same size. It's also called a rice stitch, I think, where you do a little stitch here, and then you do another one over here. You might go down like that. So you just, you're basically filling in the space with little, little tiny stitches, about the size of a grain of rice. I don't know if you can see it very well, but the red stitching on this is this little seed stitch. It's very effective. It looks really good in the heavier threads. And if you bought yarn, you can use yarn as well. Um, if you've ever done um, couching, you can take your yarn, let's so say this is a piece of yarn, say it's a little bit thicker. Okay, so you lay it down where you want it to go. Then you just take your, your stitch and you do a little stitch over and then you come up over here and take another little stitch. So you basically put in perpendicular stitches over where the yarn is. So that's another uh, type of embellishment you can do. If you've got um, beads, this would be a good time to add them to. I have little roll black beads on this one. Uh, but, and it, you know, it's amazing how your stitching will kind of bring your piece to life when you start adding the stitching. You can also, um, on the machine, there's a straight stitch you can do a, a zigzag. You could also try to do any of the fancy stitches on it, but I don't think they'll show because it's, it's invisible thread. But if you're at home and have a fancy machine, you can 